Welcome to day two of our 21 Days of Prayer. I'm excited about this prayer opportunity, this prayer experience, because of the benefits that come from committing ourselves to prayer. Now, for some of us, the benefit will be a reboot of our engagement with God as we transition back from the summer activities to the regular rhythms of life. For others, you want to pray, but the question is how? So this is like a course learning what to pray and how to pray. And remember, we're moving away from the shallow end of our prayer life and we're diving in deep. There's no bottom but God. It's the place that we acknowledge that I'm not big enough, but God, you are. You're big enough. Now, I know some will ask, well, big enough for what? Big enough for the challenges you're facing in life. Big enough for the strength that you need to care for that family member with special needs. Big enough for the obstacles that you face in your marriage. Big enough for the emptiness that you feel in your soul. Big enough for the roadblocks in your finances. Big enough for the wisdom that you need as a parent. Big enough for the vision that God's called Northwest Christian Church to as a church. God is big enough. Now, yesterday we started in Matthew 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Now, we're still there, but now we're in verse 9 and 10. And Jesus says, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Now, this is probably humor to Jesus' original audience. The bread they eat back then looks a lot like the stones near the shore of the lake where they're sitting. Bread's round, it's oval shaped, it has a tough crust, so it doesn't go bad quite so fast. So these people know it's cruel for a father to trick his son and give him a stone when he asks for bread. Jesus then talks about fish. When you pull in a net of fish back then, you sort through it because there might be sort of a poisonous eel. So if your son or daughter asks, can I have a fish? You don't just reach in and give them anything because it might make them sick. It could even kill them. So never give them a snake. Jesus makes the point that loving parents want to give their kids good gifts. And God's the same way. Next verse, if you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Jesus is saying, hey, if your parents who are sinful people, and remember the Bible says all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. If us sinful parents know how to give good gifts, how much more will our heavenly Father who's perfect, who's sinless, give good gifts to those who ask. Jesus wants us to know God is ready to give us good gifts. Now, some think then, why doesn't God give me everything I pray for? And why do other people seem to get things that they don't even pray for? But I don't ever get the things that I pray for. I mean, I pray to pass my final. I fail. Tim, he doesn't pray. He gets an A+. I pray for healing, for sickness. It just gets worse. My neighbor who doesn't pray, she gets well. Well, Jesus is not saying pray for anything you want and God just is going to give it to you. Parents, we know giving our kids anything they want is not a good gift. It spoils them. It makes them immature. It makes them more demanding. And again, remember the context when Jesus speaks these words. People want to know, Jesus, how can we reach the spiritual maturity that you call us to in the Sermon on the Mount? How can we have the transformed hearts? How can we have the attitudes and be the kind of people that Jesus calls us to? And Jesus says, if you pray passionately, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, God will give you good gifts. In other words, through this process, God will transform you, grow you, produce spiritual maturity, character in you that you and I will not experience apart from our prayers. Now, again, I get it. We think receiving good gifts is getting whatever we want, that that's going to be a good gift. But God's good gifts are all about transforming us to be like Jesus. So here's the challenge for the 21 days of prayer. Let's up the passion of our prayers. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And let's be receptive to God's good gifts. Whether that's divine intervention or it's a deeper work of inner transformation in our heart. Let me pray for you today. Well, God, it's a, a privilege to be in this 21-day prayer journey with everyone. I pray that you'll do a work in us and through us and among us. In fact, do a deep work, a transforming work. Help us to grow in you more. God, forgive us when we don't take advantage of this amazing opportunity to talk to you, the creator of the universe. Thank you, though, that you are a God who gives good gifts because you're a good, good God. Help us to see those gifts today. And I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks for being here today.